Now, joining me now are Jim Miller, who is the budget director under Ronald Reagan, and Michael Norman, chief economist at John Thomas Financial. I'm fascinated. When the Democrats say that they're going to give some things up, that they are going to agree to spending cuts, we know there's going to be no spending cuts because they're going to be proposed spending cuts. So if they want to spend $100,000 on something, just a random number, but they really need 80, they'll propose 100, cut it by 20, spend 80, spending the same amount of money. Well, the spending cuts are already happening. If you look at the amount uh, spent this year versus last year, we're already down. The deficit is down. And by the way, the fear of going over the cliff, we already went over the cliff. We see it in the economic numbers now. You know, companies had been planning for this in anticipation of going over the cliff. They saw the political landscape. So what we're seeing now, and it's very evident in the economic data, is that companies have been canceling contracts. They've been cutting back on spending and investment. They've been sending out pink slips. So we're actually going over the cliff right now. You know, the cliff's probably a bad term. I mean, we don't just do a sheer drop. It's more like a slope, and this plays out hopefully over the course of the, the coming year or two. The bigger problem, I think, is the debt ceiling. If we don't get an increase in that, then we could really have a steep drop in the economy. And, you know, you say you're kind of disappointed. It seems that we're not going to get these cuts. But I ask you, you know, look at Europe, all right? That's a real time. Working out so good yeah, there. That, well, that's a real time laboratory for austerity and spending cuts and, and deficit reduction. Well, guess what? The deficits are not going down. The economies are cratering, unemployment's going through the roof, and you have social unrest all as a result of this ridiculous concept of austerity. Look, the math of austerity doesn't work. We see that very clearly. So this idea that we need to somehow balance the budget in the midst of an 8% unemployment rate and very uh, large output gap, in other words, a weak economy, that's bad policy. And, I mean, if we do it, we're going to see the results of that. We're going to have a much higher unemployment rate and a much weaker economy, if not a full-blown recession. Let me bring in Mr. Miller. Um, when I hear Democrats talk about future spending cuts, we've seen this before, Ronald Reagan, Tip O'Neill. But what they're really talking about is proposed spending. If the president is going to spend more on Obamacare, more on education, more on, on, on welfare, how are they going to cut spending when the president's talking about opening new spending? How is that possible? Well, it's a favorite game in Washington that you talk about cutting spending and you're really cutting from the increase, not the level of spending. Not the way that people talk about their own budgets. If talk, family talks about cutting spending, they mean to spend less this year than last year. In Washington, that means spending less than you would have spent if everything had gone hunky-dory. It's not hunky-dory. You've got a situation right now, we need to separate out two concepts. One is spending cuts under this possible sequester, and the other are the tax rate increases that will take place if nothing is done. The spending, the sequester, the cuts in spending don't, don't scare me a lot. Uh, there are some broad-scale cuts and more for defense than anywhere else, but we've had sequesters before. The amount of money is not huge. There can be reprogramming, and also, um, it's a technical matter, but basically Congress appropriates budget authority, which is like money in a bank, and it's only the outlays that get hurt later on. But, the, but, but right now, defense has a lot of unexpended budget authority that they could spend and wouldn't be hurt uh, immediately. On the other hand, cutting uh, or a failure to extend the lower tax rates could really hurt the economy very badly. And, and that's what we're looking at. And even not if the rates are extended or the lower rates are extended for the people in the middle class or whatever, below 250000 for a family, below 200000 for an individual, you're going to get much of the same effect because it's the people at the top that are creating the opportunities for new investment, for new hiring, for new employment. And our economy is very, very fragile right now. Look what happened to the stock market. Look what happens uh, with all these announcements of people cutting back and firing people and not hiring and so forth. I think the president would be quite wise to accept some kind of uh, accommodation that would keep those marginal tax rates where they are right now. Well, here, building on what Mr. Miller just said, that if you are talking about money you spent last year, if you are not spending one penny less 
than that in the next year. If you're talking about just proposed spending or spending increases that are expected, you're not really cutting the amount that the government has to tax, consume, and spend. Let's clarify something, okay? Uh, from a fiscal point of view, a spending cut is fiscally the equivalent of a tax increase. What is a tax increase? Why don't we like higher taxes? Because it removes income from the economy. From, from our back from pockets. A, right. Well, a spending cut does the same thing. It just hits a different income group. It probably hits a middle to lower income group. So it's hypocritical to say, hey, I'm all for spending cuts, but I'm against tax increases. That's like saying, I'm against tax increases, but I'm for tax increases for middle class and lower income wait, because wait, wait, wait. they're the ones who are the recipient of this money that's spent by the government primarily. How, many, how much should any one person expect for their income to be adjusted by the incomes of other people. It's not by the incomes of other if people. If somebody is... How do you run a deficit? The, the, government, if, the government can only run a deficit if it spends more money than it takes right. away but, from people. But so how it's much, a net addition of money to the economy. But how much should any one person expect the government to create programs that they don't pull the, pay the full cost for and impose that cost onto other people uh, who, know, don't, well, who, don't, who don't bear the, the burden? I mean, we live in a democracy. We vote on these things. We decide through so the democratic the property process. Of other people no, it's not, it's not the property of other people. I it just explained it. If the government spends a trillion and a half dollars more, well, then it Miller. takes away... I don't I don't care if you ask Jim Miller. I'm telling ask you the Jim Miller, Well, it doesn't matter because I'm giving you the person, answer, and it's not. It's a political decision. That's that not a political and decision. If one let person me just, is voting was, a dollar has, from has, himself to somebody were, else, were that taxes, is wealth redistribution. Were taxes increased on you in the last four years to be able to afford paying out this so-called money out of your pocket to other people. No, the tax rate has been exactly but if you're the not same. Paying Where your did the money come from? Or your Where did the money come from? Did it come from your pocket? Did it come from some well, wealthy person? Well, we don't get prorated no. tax bills. No, it Mr. doesn't Miller, come from Mr. anywhere Miller. because the government creates the money here. that it spends. If, if the he can't help you out can help because out he doesn't have the unless, unless, I heard his answer Unless we're before. printing money, how is all it, government how is it spending not, is printing how, money? Hold on a all let me, government let me, let me ask spending Mr. Miller, is printing please. money, all right? How is it that, that we can create classes of people who reliably expect the government to create programs that they're not going to bear the full cost of and, and have other people who Everyone don't even qualify to use them? No, not if you're not paying taxes. If you well, work let, and please, you contribute sir, to the growth let in Mr. the Miller economy, answer the question here. then you are on. paying the please, cost, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Can, Mr. Miller. <laughs> I find this... <laughs> I find this altogether confusing and a lot of gobbledygook. The facts well, are the that the tax rates are at a level right now it. at which the economy has some chance of expanding. I believe that the economy will continue to expand, albeit slowly. But if you're going to change the tax rates, increase them, especially for people small businesses who create the jobs, you are putting <laughs> the economy at great risk. Those are facts. And that is something that facts the president to should Miller. be very concerned about. A lot of studies have suggested that the numbers are different. You know, each study has their own different projection. But no one argues strongly and reasonably that an increase in tax rates are going to help the economy. My goodness, the president said this himself the last time that the uh, yeah, tax rates politics. were uh, extended. I don't know for what reason, but the president seems to be bent on redistribution. And even if c increasing tax rates generates no additional revenue, he seems bent on keeping the tax, uh, 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 increasing the tax rates on the, on the wealthy or what he calls the wealth, uh, rich or those who have higher incomes. I just think it, it makes no sense. I think it's just very bad economics, and I don't know why the president's persisting in this, All right. other than ideological redistribution. Well, we're out of time here. Michael James, thank you so much for being here. David Petraeus gives his version of events to Congress on what happened in Libya. I'll give you a hint. It doesn't add up to the White House's story. That's next.